Welcome back everybody to BeamNG Drive and today we're taking a look at the Savita Bolide more specifically the 390 GT Strada made between 1981 and 1988 and you're probably wondering why we're looking back at this car well it had a remaster recently and uh, yeah it's had a fair few bits uh, overhauled onto it including like interior and exterior changes as well as some uh, crash modifications and uh, yeah this has 425 horsepower 273 pounds feet of torque from a 3.9 litre V8 engine the car itself weighs 2712 pounds and it's a homologation special for group 4 rally so it's not the full blown rally car obviously because it's a homologation special but still it's got roll cage and uh, yeah all the usual kind of buttons that you'd expect you see through to the engine there yeah it's a manual I think it's five speeds, five or six, and uh, yeah, not very much in the way of creature comforts, but still a uh, really, really rather good overall car, especially for the type that it is. So uh, yeah, the big change between this and the uh, previous iteration of the Bolide is the fact that this can be split in two. As you can see, it's connected by these metal bars here. This has a little bit of extra strengthening in terms of the skid plate here. But that's not going to offer that much protection if the rest of this car is just going to go. So, uh, yeah, all of those bars link the rear subframe to the back of the uh, passenger and driver compartment. And you can also lose the front subframe as well in the same kind of manner. But as you can see, they are also attached to the uh, where the driver and passenger would sit. So, yeah, I like the fact that you can split it in half now. Whether or not we'll be able to do that on this uh, episode, we'll have to see, but if we can't do it in the normal crashes that we do, then we'll uh, see if we can do it at the end. So, uh, yeah, let's get around this suspension area and see how long it'll last until it dies. And then, uh, yeah, we'll uh, roll it over, blow it up, and we'll do something a little bit different because the cinder block walls are currently glitched out. So uh, we'll see that in a second. If this doesn't last very long, that is. Obviously it's meant for, you know, built for doing the jumps and bumps on the harsh kind of terrain, so it might well survive here for quite a while. At the end of the day, it's still only rear wheel drive. Even though it's got that skid plate, the engine is still quite exposed. And it obviously can only, always just roll over as well, which is not helpful. There we go. One of the brakes is fading for some reason. Oh dear. These are things to keep control of, but then again it does have a huge amount of horsepower, not very much in the way of weight. Bodywork has been damaged, which I guess is no surprise. Oh, there we go, there's a the wheel gone. Yeah, we don't have a good enough diff to uh, drive on only one wheel, so uh, yeah, uns uh, su quite surprising actually that it's failed that quickly, but it does show that the wheels are probably the weak element of this car, so. Yeah, not quite sure how that means it's going to deal with the rollover ramp, but we'll have to see. So, uh, yeah, I can't really give that a pass there, because it really didn't last all that long at all. So, yeah, if you haven't re already uh, worked it out, this is clearly based on the Lancia Stratos. Should we really uh, reset it? barrels or thereabouts. So you probably can see what we're going to be going up against instead of the cinder block wall but you'll see it again in a second. Because yeah the cinder block wall has glitched out. It often happens when a game has this game has had a big update and uh, see we've had a quite a big update with uh, this car. So this car being remastered and the uh, brand new muscle car and the uh, other recent upgrades. So uh, yeah let's launch this. So yeah, there's the barrels and we're going to go through the crash hard shed. Let's see what happens here. Now 
We did see the wheel fall off quite easily on the uh, suspension area. That might well not happen here. Could easily survive or fail in a different way. Now, obviously, it does have that roll cage, which might well help in terms of keeping the roof intact. Losing the spoiler. Does roll quite well. Oh, there goes the wheel again. This is not doing very well. <sighs> again, just shows just because something's made for being tough does not mean that it's going to survive certain aspects. So yeah, this is going to fail at the first hurdle on here as well. Unfortunately. Yeah, the rest of the car held up well. But the fact that it's lost a wheel... Is a oh, we can drive. Maybe. I wouldn't have allowed this at the suspension area because this would have been too slow to actually cause any damage, but... Because it's here, and I'm more interested in the damage that we can be uh, sustained on the rollover ramp. It doesn't matter that we're not going fast. last very long because the engine is overheating I'm going to keep up with 7,000 RPM we are struggling to get on the ramp come on let's get on there Go. Well, that was a surprise that we were able to uh, drive. So let's see if we can survive a second go. Oh, we're going to lose the other rear wheel and then we really won't be able to drive. <laughs> Looks like we are. That is really rather wobbly now. More bodywork damage, but nothing critical yet. That wheel might well have just hanged on. I don't think so. Yep, yep, come on. Nope. I don't think the car has enough power anymore now that the, the engine has been damaged from lack of coolant. Limping, we're not going to get anywhere so yeah that is a shame but at least we got to see it a second time but yeah I would have preferred it to have survived for the whole three and I expected it would have done in other areas but yeah the wheels again being the weak point so again is another failure so uh, let's see if we can reverse this car's luck with the explosive barrels let's see if we can survive here Whether or not this is going to split any of the car up. Yep, there goes the front subframe. Did say that could happen. So, yeah, this car can be split into three front, middle, and rear. Rear hold on, though. Yeah, we have lost the entire front of the car. There it is. <laughs> and just came down like an astronaut. Jesus. Uh, but yeah. Granted, the uh, passenger compartment is still safe and it does still drive. Perfectly, actually, uh, outside of the fact you can't steer. But uh, yeah, obviously, uh, we're looking at this in more in terms of really a, s a mix of safety and drivability. And uh, yeah, it doesn't drive really anymore at all. It doesn't have any front wheels. But in terms of safety, yeah, that's a pass. So I'm going to overall give it a uh, pass purely because the rest of the car has practically been untouched by that explosion. But obviously, the crucial part at the front has been. Yeah, completely eviscerated, but, you know, we have given cars a pass before when they've not really been able to steer anymore, so, uh, 
yeah, not going to slate this car just because it's lost its entire front. And at the end of the day, that did protect the rest of the car. So, uh, yeah, going to give it a pass there. Right. So now we're going to have to travel a little bit to get to the, uh, the ramp that is going to launch us into the crash of our shed. Like I said, the uh, center block wall is extremely glitched out at the moment and it's not really something you can crash into effectively. So, uh, yeah, let's get into this shed at 60 miles an hour. Close as we can get, because obviously we've got a bit less of a run-up. We can do it. Quite made it all the way through there. We hit the roof, which was quite devastating. Drag the car out to see if it still works. Come on, wriggle free. Set the shed so we can get rid of the debris that is under us. Yep, yeah, still drives. And despite all of that roof damage, I think we would be alright. It's more come down the centre than it has in the rest of the car. So, yeah, I'm going to give that a pass, despite that being one of the few turns that we'll probably do that. But if the uh, cinder block wall is ever glitched out again, we will do that test for other cars. But yeah, no doubt in my mind that it would have passed the cinder block wall as well. So, yeah, gonna give it a pass here because it's also passed it pretty well here as well, despite that roof damage. But like I said, it's at the center and not where the driver or passenger is. So, uh, yeah, nonetheless, let's get to the crash hall and see how this deals with 30, 40, and 60 mile an hour small overlap crashes. Right, so here we are at the crash hall. Now, I expect this to do well because it does have that roll cage on it. So anything less than good is going to be a surprise. We should walk this 30 mile an hour impact. So uh, yeah, Let's see what a low speed rally car crash looks like. Perfect. Now obviously with this car you have very minimal uh, stuff up front to uh, slow the car down or protect anyone but in it in the car but yeah that dealt with that fine. In fact it still works obviously. Yeah the wheel's been bent up a fair bit, it's not really touching the ground anymore. Obviously it's taken some bodywork damage but everything back from the wheels is uh, fine so uh, that at the end of the day is all that matters. So yeah, this can do not to 64.9 seconds, not to 109.8 seconds, and going to a top speed of 188 miles an hour, which is yeah, decidedly quicker than I would expect a rally car to be. Especially in terms of top speed, but it doesn't seem to really matter when you can has to consider how safe this seems to be because even though the mechanics have failed us either in terms of the wheels popping off or no longer being able to drive uh, the rest of the car has survived extremely well and it's done so here at uh, 40 miles an hour so uh, again yeah the wheel has taken a fair bit of damage but there's really not that much extra damage outside of you know a bit more of the bodywork being crumpled so uh, yeah, that is a surprise. So uh, let's see what happens at 60. Most cars have failed this. So it would be nice to have one that will pass. Mm, yeah, that's fine. severe impact obviously and I doubt anyone will get away with zero injuries but the car itself has dealt with that remarkably nicely so uh, yeah you can see here yeah the doors crumpled up a bit uh, but the steering wheel hasn't really moved the pedals haven't really moved and uh, yeah even though the dashboard has crumpled up a fair bit you 
can just see from the outside that it's very minimal deformation on the outside. So, uh, yeah, overall, a pass for this car. So that's three out of three. So, uh, yeah, even though it only got, you know, two on the uh, grid map, it's gotten three here. So it's at least got five out of ten. But yeah, let's get out onto the highway and see how this deals at 60 mile an hour with two similarly sized and similarly weighted vehicles and then one that really isn't. So here we are at the highway, so the first car that we're going to go up against is the basic Hirochi Sunburst. Now it does weigh more than us, about 187 pounds more, but I'm confident that this will be able to deal with this regardless of that. So uh, yeah, let's uh, get cars started. Are you not moving? quite on centre but I don't think that's really going to matter with this with the roll cage when it practically is centre anyway at the end of the day so just didn't look it feared that would be the case with cars higher with higher um, ride height than us riding over the uh, really rather ramp shaped nose but not enough to impede into the car it's not come through the windscreen or anything like that Roll dealt with that fine and it deflected the sunburst so well that it's actually flipped it over. Sunburst actually dealt with that fine as well considering what it was going up against. But yeah, more importantly the uh, bolide there has dealt with that perfectly well. Still drives, still steers. At the end of the day, is the least you can ask for after a 60 mile an hour impact. So, uh, yeah, let's see if we can get in something else and uh, challenge the bolide. Pardon me, uh, let's see if we can challenge the bolide. I'm not pretty sure on any car, or well, any kind of normal car, isn't really going to challenge this in terms of its weight. And again, like so many other cars, difficult to try and really nail down a car that weighs about the same. Although this would help. Uh, yeah, the... Uh, yeah, the base 200BX is the exact same weight as us, so let's see what happens here. Right, this is obviously a longer car than the uh, Sunburst. Obviously, a lighter one as well, and also older. Ooh. Tell being a bit more off center that did a little bit more damage to us. Again, we're deflecting a car so well that it, again, not quite as much as the Sunburst, but we nearly rolled over the uh, 200BX there as well. So yeah, a little bit more damage to us because we're slightly more off-centre. We've blown out one of the windows, and there is some more chassis deformation, but again, overall, still pretty damn good in here. And uh, yeah, that roll cage is doing wonders for us. So. Uh, yeah, and the 200BX did that, dealt with that fine as well, to be honest, considering, again, it's a civilian car and we are not, so, uh, yeah. Right, let's get into something much, much heavier and see if we can really challenge the uh, bolide, because in terms of crash safety, it's not really been challenged all that much at all, so, uh, yeah. Something big, heavy, and not particularly suitable. Thinking of the Gavril B series, to be honest. How quick is this in terms of acceleration? Not gonna tell us, is it? I'll go for this one. It should hopefully get up to um, 60 miles an hour. And even if it doesn't, it's still going to be a challenge for the bowline. Yeah, it's gone over too. Right, that's good to know. 
To oblivion we go. Slow this right down at 100%. 100 times even. So as you can see, the uh, bowl ID is going to slip right under the... Uh, oh yeah, that roll cage is nothing there. Just completely made mince wheat work of that, and we've blown our fuel tank, and we've lost our front subframe. Oh dear. That's death. That is death. <laughs> yeah, no one's surviving that. Not at all, and uh, yeah, the fact that the car's still somewhat dry, well, it's not going to steer anymore and it's losing fuel by the minute, but yeah, that does show us how much of a benefit having a mid-engine rear-wheel drive car is, because even if when your car's completely decimated at the front, you still probably will be able to drive, but not all that effectively without your rear wheel, your front wheel. So yeah, we didn't get the car to split in half, so uh, let's see if we can do that to end this episode with. But yeah, got two out of three here. Three out of three on the crash hole and two out of four on the uh, grid map. So uh, yeah, overall, very impressive uh, despite, you know, failing spectacularly on the suspension uh, area and uh, obviously the uh, rollover ramp. Which is a bit of a shame. I'm not quite sure where to hit this because at the centre it is thereabouts where the uh, front the uh, front and the uh, rear meet up. That could be the strong point, so do you hit the rear end? Well, let's find out if that this works. Oh yes it does. Oh dear. I love the fact you can do that. <laughs> Completely dragged the uh, rear end away there. Does the engine still want to work? Yes, it does. <laughs> there it is. It's basically like a cluster bot from Robot Wars. And now it's on fire. <laughs> Uh, but the, yeah, there we go. That's all that's left of the rest of the car. Oh. But that's just the way certain cars like this were built back in the day. They were uh, combinations of separate parts of the body all combined together. It wasn't a, uh, a unibody kind of style or a body on frame. It was basically chassis meets rest of bodywork and I can't even roll it over anymore. Well, the rest of the car dealt with that alright. <laughs> but yeah, that's the rear end there. A blaze in a blaze of glory. So, uh, yeah, nonetheless, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. I certainly have. It's been really rather interesting to have a more, you know, um, race car, rally car kind of vehicle on this series. And, uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed, uh, you know, playing with this car for yourself if you haven't or if you have already. And if you haven't, then I do highly recommend it. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.